for years I've been playing guitar and there's been a lot of times where you know you think you buy that one magic pedal and you'll sound like Jimi Hendrix. It's usually not the case. It takes a lot of trial and error to figure out what sounds good or what works for you in terms of uh, getting your vision across, I guess you would say. Types of amps to achieve certain types of tones, pickups, uh, string gauges, you know, every little Every little nuance does make a difference in your overall sound. Today, um, I'll be going through a couple of examples of what certain pedals do or what kind of pedals you can use to achieve certain sounds. I'll start out with the M13. Have you guys heard of this? From Line 6, M13. Basically, um, are you familiar with Line 6 at all? Yes! <laughs> right on. Um, there, Line 6 basically was a company um, that came out of the breakthrough technology of mimicking a lot of the expensive gear through means of digital software. It all started out with software, then came modeling apps, and then there was the Pod XT, the Pod, which basically gave you the sound of something like this and your desk through your headphones. Now, what this is, um, over the years, a lot of their pedal boards mimicked the characteristics of amps, microphones, speakers, um, ambience of a room and effects pedals. A lot of guys, myself included, bought a Pod XT because um, sometimes you know a buddy invites you to a blues club to do a jam. And maybe you don't necessarily want to bring your gear just to go up there for five, ten minutes. You know? So it is a convenient thing to do to bring a board, go straight into the board, and just have all your sounds right there. But if you'd like to jam out, sometimes people like to tinker around with pedals. And if you're anything like me, you get ADD when you start playing around with pedals. Like, I've yes. made gigantic pedal boards thinking, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And I get to the gig, and I use two pedals. <laughs> my wah and my boost. I just stare there, and I, I just, like, I see everything, and I just say, screw it. <laughs> I just plug straight in. But something like this, you're not committed to anything. Basically. You have 76 pedals in there. You can put them in any order you want. And basically, through these four rows, you can assign any of those pedals to any one of those buttons. So any scenario, you can save up to 12 scenes. Scenes are as you can arrange a pedal board with 12 pedals in any order you want. Have 12 different versions to just turn it on and off you know, on the fly and whatnot. Plus there's a... Um, <clears throat> 22 second loop sampler. Now for me, that's probably the most valuable thing I got out of this because uh, it really helped in my playing as far as practicing and learning theory or just learning how to work on your ear. Because holding a C chord for like an hour and a half, uh, I don't think you'll find anybody that'll do that for you while you jam out for like three hours, you know, they'll get sick of it. You can sit in your room and play to your heart's content. So, uh, let me give you a couple of examples of what you can do with this. I get the loop going.
that thing. Synth string. Here's a pretty stony sound. And what that's doing, that's mimicking a lot of the uh, analog synth stuff that's been a trend nowadays, but if you've ever seen how much a Mooger Fugger costs, it's about five, six hundred dollars. If you just want to dabble in it and you know, just mess around with those sounds without shelling out too much, you can kind of experiment with those kinds of sounds in here. And with the looper, you can kind of take it to another level, blending it with distortion. See, it by itself. Add a tube screamer to that. crazy sounds, bring the loop into the fold. I can drop that down and with something cool like that. Um, drawing a note like that really helped help me in learning my, uh, getting a little more solid with my modes. In terms of like, if you have a note going constantly, practicing your scales, you can kind of latch onto it. And uh, kind of helps your ear find the right intervals within, for, for your solo, basically, uh, without getting too technical about it. For instance, like sometimes we're on a C. Here, like slow down to kind of. What I used to do is kind of check the progress of my technique. Like, say you start flailing, you think, yeah, all right, I'm getting pretty fast, right? But slow, you record yourself playing fast, slow it down, hear how clean you actually are. You'd be surprised how sloppy you can actually be. That's, that's your plan. See, you know, to hear things that you won't normally hear. Or say so you thought, you know, you came up with a cool lick and say, oh, maybe that might sound a little fast. Just you can record it in half speed. Obviously, you're not going to play it that fast, but you can just <laughs> kind of hear it so that you figure, all right, that sounds kind of cool. Maybe I'll spin nine weeks learning how to play it that fast. Because <laughs> I've done that and for nothing, you know, that lick wasn't as cool as I thought it'd be. But anyway, 